I'm gonna make a pretty radical statement at the beginning of this video. I love classic gaming. I know, I know. We only make radical statements on this channel, only the hottest of takes in the gaming industry. So, to show my love of classic games, I went out with my own money and I purchased this NES. And this is an original NES from 1985. And it's just comforting to me to be able to own this and have a piece of gaming history in my home in my possession. I was also able to get a couple of uh, NES gems. I was able to get uh, Super Mario Bros. Duck Hunt, which, you know, of course, is you can get that anywhere at any game store. I was able to get Top Gun, which, I mean, hey, Top Gun, it's a, it's a great movie. I was also able to get uh, Resident Evil 4. The best, only the best NES game. So now that I own an original NES, I should go and I should expand my collection. I mean, what good is a console with only three games to play? One of my favorite Game Boy Advance games was Kirby's Nightmare in Dreamland. And I only recently discovered that that game was a remake of an NES game called Kirby's Adventure. But the store that I went to to purchase this NES and those three games, it didn't have Kirby's Adventure. Well, what's a young gamer like me supposed to do? Well, the only thing left instead of going outside, is to go onto the online world of eBay and see if I can track down a copy of Kirby's Adventure for dirt cheap. All right, so we're on the PC. We're going to find ourselves a cheap copy of Kirby's Adventure. So let's just go, let's just head down to ebay.com and let's search for Kirby's Adventure. And here we go. What the fuck? I can't be spending $20,000 on NES games. How am I gonna buy more NES games if I spend my entire life savings on one game? That's fun, unreal, that's not, I don't own $20,000. <laughs> Fully, there was a quick, easy, and legal solution to getting classic NES games in my very home right at this moment. Aren't you supposed to be dead? Okay, so memes aside, there are a lot of video games out there and most of which we'll just never be able to play. They could be trapped on a console that just didn't sell very well, or they could have had a limited release. Or, if we're talking in the modern age, they could have been pulled down from digital storefronts just for some bullshit copyright disputes. But what if you actually wanted to play those games? Well, there's a very simple solution to that. Actually, I don't think what I'm saying is coming across very well. Maybe I should break down what I mean. You know what, I'm gonna go do that right now. Y'all just hang tight. Now, I may not be a lawyer, but I can tell you that emulators are 100% legal. However, downloading ROMs and ISOs and things like that, that's 100% illegal. You might be like me and think, oh, well, I'll just take all the physical games that I own and dump them onto my PC. That should be legal, right? WRONG! That's still illegal! Although, like, it kind of isn't? Okay, look, some laws and codes say that it's illegal, some laws and codes say that it's illegal. It's, it, it's a mess. All right, I can't tell you if like anything that I'm gonna talk about in this video is actually legal, minus the emulator programs. This video is only gonna be talking about my personal opinions on emulation and why I feel it's vital for not only the industry, but for the medium as a whole. Because emulation and piracy are two very different things. Emulation focuses mostly on preservation and allowing others to play games that they just kind of wouldn't be able to otherwise. Piracy just kind of focuses on getting shit for free. I don't fully approve of piracy, I wanna make that very clear right now, now, but I'm aware that there are times where it becomes kind of a necessary evil. Mostly in the case of Scott Pilgrim vs. The World of the Game. Rest in peace, you beautiful devil. Can we get some, can we get some Dory Maze? Dory Maze in chat? Oh, Dory Maze. Is that, is that meme still a thing? I love, Do I love that meme. I don't, I don't fucking know if anybody else likes it. Unfortunately, this entire discussion is going to fall into kind of a moral gray area. And honestly, this all just kind of depends on you. Like, do you think this is okay or not? I can't answer that for you. Okay, so uh, after all that spiel and legal bullshit, I'm, I'm just gonna talk about why I love emulation so much. First of all, if you made it this far into the video and you still kind of don't know what emulation is, it's not that hard of a concept to grasp. For the scope of this video, emulation is just playing games on hardware it wasn't originally intended for. So like all the hot memes you see of Doom running on like a microwave or like a, like a piano, that's emulation. Or like when Animal Crossing on the GameCube lets you play NES games within the game of Animal Crossing. This is also emulation. But both of these instances are different to what I wanna talk about. In the case of Doom, that game's source code was released in like 
98 or 99. Um, here's the actual date it was released. So anyone can port Doom to whatever they want, they just can't make any money off of it. Bethesda and id still own the copyright to the name Doom, the brand Doom. In the case of Animal Crossing, Nintendo still owns all those games, so they can pretty much do whatever they want with it. <laughs> No, no, no. What I'm talking about is going on to Cool Roms or EMU Paradise and downloading Mario All-Stars for free. Okay, so I just realized I didn't explain what a ROM or an ISO actually is. Um, a ROM is the portion of the cartridge that is held on the read-only memory chip of the, the cartridge itself. Um, and an ISO would be like a digital image of the disc. So it would be... It, oh shit, it would, it would be like taking Metroid Prime Trilogy and like making a digital copy of the disc. Does, does that make sense? It, it's important for me to be transparent with you and like, I don't want you to be lost when I use the phrase ROM or ISO. I, you're smart, I understand that, but I, you, you gotta, gotta at least build these bridges, right? I don't wanna gatekeep anything. Anyway, back to the video. All right, so everything I'm talking about is like basically theft, but listen. It's very important. Emulators provide so many services that real releases either can't or just won't. They just won't do this. Like, off the top of my head, totally not on a script that I have like right over here. <laughs> they allow dedicated players to mod the game that they love so much. Now this could be anything from adding online support, upresing textures, changing up gameplay mechanics to fit niche markets, or most importantly, memes. All right, look, that was a lot of fun, but it's time we got serious. Do you really expect me, a gamer in current year, to play a game with a resolution lower than 1080p? Unacceptable. The GameCube can only do like 480i in the best of situations. And the N64 like, what, 240p? Nah, 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 disgusting. But with an emulator, you can toss that shit right out the fucking window. You can play SpongeBob SquarePants, the movie, the game, in glorious 1080p as it was meant to be played, obviously. And this makes it real easy for things like Let's Plays or live streams. Yeah, all right, I know, this is an extremely niche advantage for emulators, but it's an advantage nonetheless. If I wanted to legitimately record GameCube games, I would need to buy additional and expensive hardware. Or I could just like boot up Dolphin, because it's basically free. I own pretty much all the games that I have on my Dolphin list. You fucking... I, here, here's an image of my, of my dolphin library, and then right next to it, I'm gonna put an image of like my GameCube library, and I own pretty much every single game on this list, all right? Don't you, don't you fucking come into my house and tell me that I'm stealing games. Cause I've only done that a couple times. Not all the time, woo! The wonderful thing is that it's not hard at all to get a real GameCube controller working with dolphin. It's basically like playing the real thing, but better because there's better hardware behind it. And pretty much every single emulator is really controller friendly. Like you can just plug whatever the fuck you want into your computer and manually set up a few buttons. And here, here's me playing Shadow of the Colossus with a Switch Pro controller. In case it's not blatantly obvious at this point, I value ease of access. Like for example, I use a piece of software called the good old games Galaxy Launcher. Uh, basically what it does is it takes all of your libraries from places like Steam and Uplay and Origin and fucking epic game store and compiles them all into one big library. It's really convenient. And similarly, I appreciate having all of my classic games on the same piece of hardware too. It's just so much easier. Beyond all that though, it's just really comforting to have all these games backed up. I know I'm not gonna lose them. Cause here's the thing we gotta remember when we talk about classic games and all that stuff, all this hardware is gonna die one day. My GameCube is just gonna stop working one day. That's gonna be a sad day, dude. But that'll all be okay in the end, because I'll have all the games backed up not only on my computer, but on a fully redundant NAS server. Okay, that last bit's probably not gonna be applicable to everybody in the audience, but you, you get my point. The discs will rot, the consoles will die, and the hardware will fade, but the games will remain eternal. And that's what's really important. It's really nice to have all the history of a console, like the peripherals and the physical games and the manuals and all that stuff. And physical games especially are really, really important nowadays. But I feel like everyone can agree on one thing. The games are what's most important, and we don't want to lose access to them, even the bad ones. You know, we want to be able to go back and show future generations what gaming used to be like. It also is really good at showing you why your opinions when you were 10 were dog shit. Like, Shadow the Hedgehog was a particular highlight for the GameCube for me. Yeah, I used to think Sonic was cool. Ooh. Ooh.
Okay, so I've talked a lot about Dolphin in this video, and you might be thinking, well, what the heck is that? Well, let me tell ya, it's the fucking best emulator ever! And that's only a slight exaggeration. It can play GameCube and Wii games, it's got support for pretty much every controller under the sun, and it can even let you play GameCube games online. That's fucking witchcraft, dude! But here's the thing, there are other emulators that exist. Surprising, right? And I personally have experience with PCSX2, Project 64, and BizHawk, and by extension Moopin, and it's a little weird. And I've had little trouble with all of them, minus Project 64 and not being able to detect my Switch Pro controller. I'm still kind of, I'm still kind of butthurt about that, but it's not that big of a deal. I also have Citra installed on my rig, but I don't use it. <laughs> I'm still trying to get all my data off my 3DS and put that on my PC. Cause like there's about 700 hours worth of Monster Hunter on this 3DS that I don't want to lose. Pretty much every other emulator I've got is made for running PlayStation games. Now I've never owned any of the PlayStation family of consoles and given that I currently work a minimum wage job at a craft store, I don't think it's within my best interest to invest in that anytime soon. But these emulators allow me to play games that I just wouldn't be able to otherwise. Yeah, games like Symphony of the Night and Shadow of the Colossus and motherfucking God Hand! Okay, so I've been screaming about different programs and emulators and uh, morally gray things, but what if you didn't want to commit theft to play video games? Well, boy, howdy do I got the solution for you! These little gizmos. I genuinely love classic consoles like these. They provide a very fast and easy solution to the problem of, why aren't I playing Donkey Kong Country right now? They're definitely a step in the right direction, but they fall a bit short. For one, their library is pretty limited. All right, so it's kind of stupid to expect an entire library's worth of games to be on them for like, what, 80 bucks? That's just not gonna happen. It's really easy to hack these things. I'm just saying. I mean, you gotta go out of your way to download and acquire the games, other than that, it's just click a few buttons and drag some files into a program. It's not hard at all. My main issues come with the emulator itself. For one, there's no way to rebind controls, unless the game itself allows you to, like with the case of Super Metroid. This isn't a thing that everyone wants, but it's still nice to have the option. And you can fucking do that on an emulator with zero issues. But you can even do it on the Wii U! Remember the Wii U Virtual Console and how cool it was? I do! Alright, this next problem's gonna get a little deep, so just stick with me. The Super Nintendo Mini outputs a video at 720p. This is three times the size of the original resolution of the Super Nintendo. Pixels don't like to be enlarged by odd integers. It would look much better if you output it at 960p instead of 720p. But like, unless you're a huge asshole nerd like I am, you're not gonna notice this and it's not gonna be that big of an issue. And there are other things I could talk about, but I feel like I could save that for its own video. And I don't own a PS1 classic because like, let's be honest, that thing's kind of a joke if you play with it just straight out of the box. Like I could mod it and put more games on it and use different controllers and do whatever, but like, I don't want to put in that much effort. <laughs> so I was going to spend this section of the script kind of theorizing on what the best possible solution would be for distributing ROMs. Like, let's say Nintendo or Sega or Sony or whoever decided, uh, you know what, fuck it, we're just going to release all of our legacy content online, you pay a premium and you just get the ROM. Like, wh what would the best possible solution look like for that kind of distribution? I'm gonna be real, that best solution already exists. So Sega sells their legacy content under the title Sega Mega Drive and Genesis Classics or however the fuck they say it. It's on the screen behind me. It is an official emulator that you can use to play Sega Mega Drive and Sega Genesis games on Steam. The program you get automatically for buying games like Sonic and Knuckles or fucking Golden Axe or whatever you want to play that's available on the Steam storefront. It also comes with this really cute front end. Like, you get this cute little Sega room, and you can look at the digital shelf and see all your digital games that you own, and you purchase all these games individually. It's not like you buy a pack and you just get all of them, or you sign up for a shitty online service and you just get dumped 20 or 30 games that you may or may not want to play. So I love shit like this already. This is adorable, and I love it, and like, I'm gonna be real, I've never played Echo the Dolphin before, but goddamn, I want to now. So here's the best part. You can just use whatever emulator you want with these games. 
in the files of the program itself is a folder called uncompressed ROMs. So when you buy the games, you just have the ROM and you can drag and drop them to whatever emulator you want to use. God damn it, Sega does what Nintendo don't. Speaking of which... Hey Nintendo, do you remember when you built up a pretty sizable collection of games that were easy to purchase legally, only to take it all away and start from scratch for your next console and then do it again for your next one? Do you remember when you had every single opportunity to re-release your classic games on modern consoles and then never do it? Do you remember EMU Paradise? One of the best ROM cataloging websites on the internet and forcing them to shut down all ROM distributions and refusing to give us the customers who would totally buy them zero opportunity to? Remember when you wanted to take one fourth of all content creators ad revenue because you couldn't live with the fact that they basically gave you free advertising? Remember Animal Crossing New Horizons ass backwards way of handling cloud saves where you only had one opportunity to get your save data back if you happen to lose your Switch and never letting you get it again? Remember Nintendo Switch Online? Remember Mother 3? I do! You guys are so funny! Okay, fuck. I, back to rationality, I guess. I understand all the things I just complained about seem kind of entitled, like, oh no, Nintendo needs to bend over backwards for me, the mighty consumer. But uh, look, there's a reason. I've spent this whole video talking about emulators and why they're cool and why I use them and yada yada yada, so why would I even care about Nintendo Switch Online or any distribution that is legal? Because emulators are a pain in the ass to set up. Emulation, with all that it has going for it, just can't compete with a well-designed and streamlined storefront or virtual console or whatever. Most consumers don't want to put up with anything that I talk about in this video. They don't want to have to think about emulators, or programs, or ROMs, ISOs. They just want to turn on the thing and make the game go. And there's nothing wrong with that. And as I said in GameCube is Special, which you should totally go watch by the way, I appreciate being able to just pop a game in and play. And there are times when I'll put up with it. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you, if I can get Majora's Mask to run with a really good texture pack on my PC at 1080p, I'm gonna fucking do it. Look at this. I'm gonna have a link to this texture pack in the description because goddamn it, it's fucking awesome. But most of the time, I just don't want to. So I'm giving everyone who's watching this video a fair warning. I have a firm belief that emulation is worth it, but I'm still gonna advocate for a proper return to the virtual console. Video games are so much more than just products to sell. They're art. They deserve the same respect that pieces like the Mona Lisa get. Like, holy shit, we spend so much time trying to preserve old art and all of these older pieces that come from bygone eras, and it is worth it, I do agree. But like, we can't just sit back and look at the art that we're making today and just think, oh, who cares? Those who care don't want to lose access to these games. We want to be able to show them to future generations and say, hey, that happened. <laughs> Shadow the Hedgehog happened. My point is, it should be easy for us, the people who play the games and attach our memories to them, to just be able to play them without having to worry about morality or I can't get this game anymore or God damn it, this game is now worth $3,000. Why did I throw it away? Like, no one should have to worry about that. I'll have links to all of the emulators I spoke about in the description below. I can't put links to games, that would be illegal, but you can figure out your own way to get ROMs and ISOs. You're smart, I believe in you. 